Hey, so this is gonna be the first proper tutorial on my channel. Uh, today I'm gonna be teaching you viewers how to make dynamic depth of field. Now, I don't wanna waste time on introductions, but I feel like it's important to explain what each instance I'm using in this showcase slash tutorial will be. So depth of field is an instance in lighting. And in lighting, there's several objects you can insert like sky, atmosphere, sun rays, color correction, bloom, and blur. A depth of field is an instance that when enabled, blur surroundings that are far away from you. So far intensity is the intensity of the depth of field from a distance. Like if you see it, if I change that to zero, it decreases and one is just completely blurred out. Focus distance is the distance that the depth of field starts to settle in. So let's say I set uh, uh, focus distance to zero. If I set it to 200, you can see that you can see more uh, out and out of further range. I'm gonna set that to 100 just for the time being. And in focus radius, is kind of the same thing i guess but near intensity is cha changes that so let's say in focus radius is 50 if i set that to zero then it, it, it makes a weird effect and focus distance also affects this but that's not what i'm here to teach i'm here to teach how to make it dynamic so what I, what do i mean by dynamic by dynamic i mean if you zoom into an object as if to examine it for example the rest of the world around you i guess blurs so if i zoomed into my character everything around my character would blur and it creates a really cool effect it's a simple effect but it really can make a, a difference if used well in some games so to get started with this script uh the first thing you want to do is insert a script into starter gui starter not that starter character scripts also works but i recommend starter gui of course you're free to put this in starter character as well i don't don't put it in starter player starter pack won't work either because why would it and since it's a local script it will not work in anything else other than starter gui or starter character in starter player it would work too it would just need to be adapted differently to, to start doing this you're first gonna have to define your depth of field effect. So let's do local, I'm gonna name this variable DOF. And for this, I'm gonna do instance.new depth of field effect. And I'm gonna set its parent to game.lighting. So we're gonna set the properties of this. So in focus radius, zero, and DOF near intensity, zero. Then we have to define our camera. So to define our camera, we can do workspace current camera and local player. You've probably seen this done everywhere. We can just do game get service players local player. You can use game players local player as well, but get service usually just feels cleaner and it's also it's also more recommended since game players local player tends to be a little slower and it can cause errors. So I just recommend get service instead. And local character is player.character. So you're the player. On the client, you are the player. And the character is the character you're controlling in the workspace. And for this, you can also add or player.character added weight. Then we need to define the head of our character. Local head character weight for child head. I'll explain why this works in a minute. So before we get anywhere, uh, we want to define, I guess, a parameter or a configurable setting. So we can do local focus radius, and I'm gonna make this six. So what this variable is controlling is a number value, and it'll basically tell it'll basically tell the rest of the code uh, how far can the object be before it focuses. Usually, a closer number is better because you have to get close to it, right? So if you set it to 50, that's just gonna be weird. Si two is way too close, and six feels is just about right maybe seven I'll, I'll leave it at seven then we do a function and i'm gonna name it lerp now you may have seen this term somewhere else so for lerp i'm gonna set the parameters a b and t so lerping is stands for linear interpolation and it's a mathematical term basically in simple terms lerp is get, is used to get a point between two other points so if you've heard of bezier curves this is somewhat similar and a good website i recommend for playing around with this is desmos and use the graphic calculator so in lerp we don't really need to do anything in this function because in the function up here we're setting the parameters so let's say if i did lerp down here uh, i'm calling the function and inside of that i'm gonna do dof and then far 
intensity and stuff like that. So this is parameter A, then I'm gonna set parameter I don't know, B and then T, which is the time it'll take. A and B are the two points, and time is the take it'll take, because the time it'll take to interpret. If I put T equals, I don't know, eight, then it'll take eight seconds, let's say, to actually finish the interpolation. In the, in the lerp function, let's put return. I'm gonna do A, our parameter A, plus, and then in parenthesis, we're gonna, uh, I did not mean to do it, so B minus A times t. This is all maths, so if you understand maths, I'm assuming you're gonna understand this. So then we're gonna make another function, and is first person. For some reason, Roblox does not have a built-in function to check if the player is first person, so we have to do some really hacky camera stuff. So for this, we're gonna do local camera distance, and we're gonna set it this is why we defined our camera, or one of the reasons. So we're gonna do camera C frame dot position, and we're gonna mine, and we're gonna subtract that by the camera focus position. We add magnitude, so that's basic. That's just distance. It's checking the distance. It's zoomed in, and we're gonna set the function to return the camera distance is less than one. The function just checks if our camera zoom distance is less than one. We're gonna need that for the main, I guess, kind of code. Then we add game get service run service and then we're gonna do render stepped now render stepped is gonna fire every single frame prior to the frame being rendered so let's say we have five frames frame five uh render step is gonna run one to four until five and then it goes to six and it runs one to five seven one to six and so on and so forth and we're gonna connect it to a function we are going to define and this function you're going to name dt dt is delta time so we're gonna do Local ignore list it is first person and character, and then we're gonna do a little bit of ray casting. So local cam ray equals ray dot new, and we're using ray casting because we can't detect if we're looking at a part by itself. We have to use ray casting from our character's head to the part we are looking at for that, so that the depth of field effect can trigger. And here we're gonna camera C frame position, and then camera. C frame dot look vector. Now look vector is uh, if you know vector three, vector three is for 3D objects, hence why it's vector three. So the origin this is the origin and this is the direction. The way the direction our camera is looking in is where the ray is gonna go. Uh, so if my character is looking forward in first person, then that's where the ray is gonna go. Then we're gonna multiply both of these by focus radius. Focus radius we already defined up here, so it's seven. So the ray is only gonna be seven studs. Long. So if the ray hits something in a radius of eight studs in the direction the character, our character is looking at, then this effect is going to trigger, and that's the camera ray that we're trying to that we're trying to generate so that the effect triggers. So local hit hit pos position. Excuse my terrible typing. Hit is I guess the part we're hitting, and the hit position is the position we're hitting it with. So we have to check if there's something in the way of that ray. Do workspace. Find part on ray, ignore list, cam ray, and ignore list. So our ignore list is this, and we defined it as is first person and character or something else. We can add objects in the ignore list so that those things are not blurred. So let's say well, I can do game.work workspace spawn location and that will be on the ignore list it won't trigger the effect so if i did the workspace dot spawn location it would not trigger the effect so transparent stuff is more so it is a weird functionality because it breaks guis it breaks billboard guis breaks a bunch of stuff um mostly glass glass is the main thing that breaks a lot of stuff so if you're making a glass thing this if statement is going to check uh the properties and transparency so it does not break if hit and Hit. So if our ray hits and the part it hit transparency is less than 0.3, let's say you can change this number. If we hit a part and the part's transparency is less than 0.3, then local distance from camera, and we're gonna put the parentheses hit, not that, uh, hit position, and we're gonna subtract it by the cam by the camera C frame position. And then we're going to change the intensity, we're going to make a variable named intensity. And we're going to divide focus radius by our distance from the camera. 
and we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.25. And then DOF dot focus distance equals distance from camera. Then DOF flare intensity, and then we're using the lerp function, so we're gonna put in parameters. So point A is the intent, the far intensity of our depth of field, and then we're gonna set it to intensity, and then we're gonna put the time. So DT times eight. Else, so if the part our ray is hitting its transparency is greater than 0 0.3, then DOF far intensity, and we're gonna do the same thing. DOF far intensity. But this time we're gonna do zero, so it's not gonna change. And DT times eight once again so this code is going is just going to make the effect so if i let's say i make a i don't know let's add a normal part and let's make the size nine by nine by nine and this is a pretty big cube so let's duplicate a couple uh, let's change their colors because i feel like it so once that's done let's add a, another object i don't know since there's a tree right here i'll add this for some things this effect might be a little weird but as long as the part is solid and it's not like a decal then it should behave perfectly normally decals will be a little weird because since the part is transparent and there's a decal in the way it'll be a little differently similar to shadow so if we play our game if we test um if i zoom into my character once my game loads load please okay there we go so i am in the game and if i zoom into my character you can see that every everything around blurs and you can see how it slightly kind of fades away which lerp is essentially just a more i guess advanced version of tween service and the reason i'm using lerp instead of tween service i forgot to explain this earlier is because lerp i feel like is less messy it's maths but it's a lot i guess it's a lot cleaner and for this usage i guess it makes some sense if i zoom into if i go to the spawn location you can see everything around the blurs same for the part and uh yeah this effect works and you can see that everything around my character is blurred out and if my character starts uh, running, the effect triggers. It's a little jank because since my character is leaning forward with this animation I have, can be a little wacky. Generally, if it should work if you don't do any crazy stuff. I can zoom in while I'm just living my life. And some emotes can disable the effect because what we're checking is the center of the camera. So if nothing is in the middle of the camera, which is the look vector, then it's not gonna trigger the effect. If there's something in the middle of the camera, then this effect should work perfectly fine. So that's how you make a dynamic depth of field. This can be used in several cases. Uh, for example, if you have a zoom in system, kind of like Minecraft Optifine or 3008, which 3008 uses this by the way. Uh, if you zoom in, then if, it, if a ray hits that object from a further distance, activate the script and this will play. So if you zoom in on that cube over there with that zoom in script, I guess, then the effect will trigger and it just looks nice. There's a lot of use cases for this and I just wanted, I just wanted to show the bare bones of the script because it's a pretty cool effect. It's a nice effect and uh, I made a post about this on the dev forum as well. It's free. It's a free model. I just wanted to show you how it worked and I wanted to teach you how to script it in case you couldn't really find a existing dynamic depth of field model which i mean fair enough i haven't been able to find many either aside from mine i hope this tutorial helped and i hope it like i don't know i guess it helped exp i hope it helped explain something i will link the dev forum post in the model in the description uh this was the dynamic depth of field tutorial so yeah good night